Robbie's. Jack is 100% proof that a dog is a man's best friend. Nobody seems to stick closer to you than your everyday playmate and best buddy. However, on a fateful evening, Jack returned home from a short walk in the woods, as is its custom. But this time, with blood dripping off its body, unknown to you, a fox had bitten it in the woods. The next day, you notice that Jack has suddenly become strangely aggressive, much like it's becoming a beast. Now, you've got a reason to worry because that might just be rabies. This animal disease spreads through the saliva of an infected animal through bites or scratches. Not long after, you confirm it's certainly rabies as Jack begins to drool excessively and is also unable to eat. The optimistic? You rush Jack to the vet clinic only to discover that the disease is incurable. You have two choices. Allow the doctors to painlessly put Jack to death or take it home with you and stand the risk of Jack infecting others. And that includes you. Newcastle disease. Sounds like a viral disease that plagues the residents of Newcastle, a city on the north side of England. Do not be fooled by the name, though, especially if you keep poultry or have some chickens in your yard. No chicken is safe at the sight of this menace of disease, be it within or outside Newcastle. In fact, it spreads faster than gossip, especially when an infected chicken is around the corner. It basically affects the respiratory, digestive, and nervous systems of these affected chickens. They may start to sneeze and cough, and then matters grow worse as they begin to pass out greenish poops, have their necks twisted to the side, stiff like a rock, tremors follow, and then partial or total paralysis. It is very difficult for an affected chicken to get away from the grip of the Newcastle disease. It just doesn't stop until it terminates the life of its victims. Sadly, Newcastle disease is incurable and can wipe off hundreds of chickens in a matter of days. Canine parvovirus. Call this the grim reaper of puppies and their mamas. It is a deadly disease that only chooses dogs as its victims, never cares whether the dog is young or old. It just takes hold of its life till it's gone. If there was a tagline for this notorious disease, then it would be parvovirus, wreaking havoc on dogs since the 1970s. It spread its wings through direct contact with infected dogs or through contaminated objects like food bowls, toys, and even the shoes of humans tending to these dogs. It attacks the intestinal lining of dogs, leading to dehydration, loss of appetite, and vomiting. Let's say you wake up one morning to see your dog watching its food from a distance and the mess it created over the night, vomiting the little food it ate. You should get it treated immediately because any slack or time wasting can degenerate into diarrhea, laced with blood and chronic fever that might end up claiming the life of your dog. Myxomatosis. This deadly animal disease goes way back to the 19th century when it started its operations in South America. It has since then spread its tentacles across the globe, killing every unlucky bunny it came across. Yours could be the next. Who knows? This is the reason why you have to pay attention to your rabbit or bunny just to see if it is not showing any symptoms of myxomatosis. Contracting this disease is a little easy for your bunny, as it only takes bites from insects like fleas and mosquitoes to get the job done. However, sometimes, if your bunny plays around other infected bunnies, they might just gift him a dose of the disease. Here's how you'll know if your bunny is already a carrier. Its body may be covered in different lumps and swellings, and puffy eyelids may develop, which can lead to blindness. Your bunny may also find it difficult to breathe or to eat, causing intense weight loss, and in most cases, the bunny may just die. Blue Tongue As a good shepherd that you are, you carefully tend to your sheep, making sure they are well-fed and safe from wandering predators. Little did you know that you can only keep them away from dangers you can see. Some mischief really can catch you unaware. It looks rather strange that despite the fine and cool evening weather, some of your sheep will not just join the others in the daily cheerful bleeding. You decide to see what's going on, and then you get shocked to your marrows. These inactive sheep all have their eyes and noses dripping with water and saliva, while they also seem to be gasping for breath. That must be the horrific blue tongue disease that plagues mostly ruminant animals, often after they have been bitten by midges of culicoids, the transmitter of the disease. Blue tongue often attacks the blood vessels of its victims, causing various symptoms like excessive salivation, difficulty swallowing, sore feet, and, ultimately, the blue coloring of their tongues. Bovine tuberculosis. Yeah, I know it's humans that suffer from tuberculosis, but this one is not that tuberculosis you know with humans. You can simply call it the animal version, and it does not even affect all animals, just cattle. However, 
Bovine tuberculosis is just as deadly as the regular TB that affects humans. It is caused by an infection from the bacterium Mycobacterium bovis and spreads through respiratory droplets or contaminated feed and water. It quickly spreads like wildfire and can remain unnoticed in affected animals for as long as many years before eventually killing them. In the early days of the infection, animals may begin to cough uncontrollably, develop swollen lymph nodes, and lose weight like an HIV-infected patient. If you have a herd of cattle, the best way to prevent this menace from going viral is to isolate the sick ones. You know, something close to what was done to humans who had the COVID-19 virus. If not, you may be bidding your entire herd a hard goodbye. Nairobi Sheep Disease Oh, this must only affect the sheep living in the forests of Nairobi, right? Well, not so true. Actually, just like African swine fever, Nairobi sheep disease was first discovered within the borders of Nairobi, Kenya in the 1910s before spreading across the globe. It's like a sniper shot targeted at sheep and goats transmitted through the bites of infected ticks. If you really want to prevent the harmful bullets of Nairobi sheep disease from hitting your flock, all you have to do is make sure there are no ticks around them. This virus takes no time before triggering several symptoms like high fever, swollen eyes, severe diarrhea, and sudden loss of appetite. The worst part of the pain that this disease can cause your flock is that if any of the affected sheep or goats is pregnant, the fetus is also not safe from attack. In fact, in most cases, miscarriages were recorded, leaving the mother sheep or goat with a slim chance of survival too. Flanders. Now, it's time to talk about the ancient dawns of mobility. I mean the strong and well-able creatures that bore the weight of kings and princes in centuries past before dignitaries began to move around in convoys of Rolls-Royce and limousines. We're talking about the horses, donkeys, camels, and mules. Gen Zs might definitely not relate to this. Anyways, as much as horses and donkeys earn their badge of honor for being strong and agile, they also have a plague that hits them to rock bottom. Glanders. This disease is caused by a bacteria called Burkholderia mali, which spreads through direct contact with infected animals or contaminated surfaces and is capable of breaking down the entire system of its victims. The moment you see a horse or donkey showing signs of fever, skin ulcers, or probably discharging mucus from its nose, be swift in getting it urgent help because its life is most certainly on a short timer.